Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the fifth From the Inside speakers panel. I'm Giselle Wynn, the VP of Academics for the REACH Foundation, and I am delighted to see you all. Thank you for being here. From the Inside was started back in December of 2020 by the academics team with a vision of connecting our close-knit community. And our distinguished alumni have been invited to return to share their knowledge, experience, and insights with our current students to prepare them for their college and career journey. And I'm really excited to introduce our host tonight, one of our very own esteemed alumni, who graduated from Valencia High School just in 2017. Recently, she graduated from UC San Diego with a Bachelor's of Science in Physiology and Neuroscience. And as if that was enough, she also minored in Global Health. She has taken her MCAT exam and aspires to be an osteopathic doctor. Please help me welcome our future doctor, our REACH all-star, ace with an amazing and awesome and angelic energy, who is going to be our host. Please help me welcome Ashley Lopez. Ashley, please take it away. Thank you for that extremely warm welcome, Giselle. I am super excited to be able to host my very first um, From the Inside event. Uh, this time around, like Giselle said, I switched roles. Last event, I was a speaker, but this time around, I'll be your host for this evening. And I first off wanna thank you all for being here with us. Um, in the chat box, if you may, could you please type what city you're joining us from? Um, that way we can just see where all of you are. And if you have joined us before, I would love to welcome you all back. Oh, we got some from your Belinda. Brea, Anaheim, Placentia, Lake Forest, Palm Desert. What a good crowd here. Orange, awesome. But like I said, if you all have joined us before, a huge welcome back. And if this is your first time, let me go ahead and tell you what you can expect tonight. Um, I have dropped the program link in the chat. Um, if you want to download that and take a peek at it. Um, for tonight, we have five diverse and talented PYLUSD alumni this evening who will share their unique personal stories, challenges, and experiences. Our speakers here are ready to give back to their community, offer support to the next generation of students, and express gratitude to their teachers, parents, admins, and all those who have helped them along the way. Each of our speakers have prepared a five minute speech. And after this speech, we will follow with the five minute Q and A. And most of all, we want to let you all know that this is an interactive conversation. We invite you all to ask questions, as many questions as you want. Don't hesitate or feel like you need to hold back. Just go ahead and type your questions in the chat box here. And we are extremely delighted to have Ms. Ann San Roman our uh, REACH Foundation board member, advisor, and principal at Fairmont Elementary to assist us as our Q&A moderator for tonight. And we'll receive your questions in the chat box and ask the speakers your questions. When the five minutes are up, um, any unanswered questions will be addressed at the end of our meeting. And just to ensure that we have a safe space for tonight's meeting, I'd like to encourage you all to keep your video on for tonight, we also have two tech masters to monitor the audio, videos, and just overall meeting. And during our speaker's presentation, we please ask for everyone to keep their mics muted. And all right, to get us started, we have four talented student moderators who will be introducing our speakers tonight. First off, we have Evelyn Yao. Hi, Evelyn. Um, she is a REACH Foundation intern 
Life Ops Learning Lab, and Kramer Middle School student. Evelyn is the youngest middle school student selected for the PYL USD Access and Inclusion Committee, and she's also an officer at the Cyber Patriots and Cybersecurity Club. Our second student moderator is Harish Iyer. He's a REACH intern and Kramer Middle School student who loves math and competes in math competitions. Harish can use his math skills on the basketball and volleyball court to calculate the velocity and trajectory of the ball to win games. Um, we also have Elena Zhang, and she's from Fairmont Elementary School and is a Life Ops Learning Lab student who aspires to study law and business one day and become the first female Asian president of the Harvard Business Review. And our last student moderator, Angela Yao, is a creative artist who can create magic from just a pen, paper, and a few markers. Angela is an active reach intern, Kramer Middle School, and Life Ops Learning Lab student. And we are delighted to have all of them here with us. And without further ado, Evelyn, please introduce our first speaker. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, so our first speaker graduated from Yerba Linda High School in 2015, where she was in the advanced video production class and anchored the school's biweekly broadcast. She studied communications at CSU San Marcos, while also working for the school newspaper all four years as their sports editor and social media manager. She also worked as a collegiate public address announcer for sporting events at UC San Diego, University of San Diego, University of Washington, and Arizona State. She went on to work for Fox Sports in LA and now is an on-air news reporter in Oregon. Please help me welcome Molly Smith. Okay, thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Molly Smith and I'm an on-air news reporter and digital producer for a CBS affiliate station in Oregon. Um, more specifically, I am an MMJ or a multimedia journalist. Uh, an MMJ is just a reporter who is trying to do everything that needs to be done in order to produce a news story. Um, a lot of people think this job comes with a crew of people to help you, it does not. <laughs> uh, you are not just a reporter, you are a million other things too. I drive the news vans, I set up the cameras, I shoot all my own videos and interviews, edit my own stories for TV, write scripts and articles for the website, everything. And that is typically what most reporters who work for small markets do. And the term small market just pretty much means a smaller city or there's a small number of televisions in the area. And for anyone who doesn't know anything about what working as a journalist entails, I will just give you a quick day in the life. For the most part, you have one day to produce a news story, um, sometimes two stories. So the first thing I do every day is I find my story, I pitch my idea to my supervisors and my colleagues during our morning meeting to get the okay to cover it. Uh, and then from there, you're pretty much moving at 100 miles per hour for the rest of the day. You have to organize your interviews, take the news van out to meet up with your subject to record your interview, film B-roll, edit the footage, record your voiceover, write scripts for the news anchors, write your website article for your story, and do your hair and makeup so that you're ready to be on camera all before 4.30 p.m. So that way you're ready for the newscast at five and six. So very busy days. And it took me a long time to get to the point that I'm at now uh, for a few reasons. The first couldn't really be helped. I graduated college in 2019 and COVID of course hit in 2020, right as I was entering the job market. So nobody was hiring at the time and I couldn't get experience. Uh, I probably sent out about 250 applications in the span of two years while I was trying to get my first job in TV. The second reason it took me longer than I'd hoped to get into the industry is because I honestly just didn't set myself up in college the way that I probably should have. The thing that is important to remember about TV is that it's a ridiculously competitive industry. There are gonna be a hundred people at any given time who want your job and are trying to get in the same position that you're in. So if this is something you really want to do, it's important to start thinking about journalism school, learning the industry, building a demo reel, and practicing your writing skills as soon as possible. I knew that I was interested in working in TV when I was in high school. I took the advanced video productions class, and I anchored for the, the school news broadcast, and I wanted to continue this into college. 
But as I was getting more serious about making this a career, I got a little bit of pushback from family members and other people in my life. Um, people were trying to discourage me from pursuing this for a few reasons. One, journalism doesn't pay the most money uh, and it's extremely time consuming and demands that you take a lot of time away from friends and family. I work nights, weekends, holidays. I sometimes have to miss important events because TV never stops and shows still happen on Christmas and Easter. Uh, for example, I work Saturday through Wednesday. So that means if Thanksgiving falls on a Sunday, looks like I'm working Thanksgiving. Um, and that's just the real reality of the job, unfortunately. So because people had pounded all of those negative associations in my head and nobody talked about the positive parts of being a journalist, I decided not to pursue journalism or broadcasting when I was applying for college. And when it came time for me to leave for school, I spent my whole first semester trying to figure out another career until I ultimately decided that I didn't care what anyone said and I was gonna try and be a reporter anyway. Um, because I didn't care about all of those negative things. I'm a good writer, I have fun telling stories and I love the pressure of speaking in front of a live camera and a live audience. But at this point, I was already attending a school that didn't have a journalism or broadcasting program so I had to think outside the box when it came to getting experience and I had to teach myself a lot of the things that I know now and a lot of the things that I would have learned if I had studied it in school. Uh, it all ended up working out for me because I eventually did get a job in, in reporting, but it took a lot of extra work and I had to jump through a lot of extra hoops to get there. So my advice to anyone interested in this type of career and just my advice in general is just to study what you wanna study and pursue what you want to pursue because at the end of the day you know yourself better than anyone else and you're the one that's going to be attending that college or working that job in the future not your parents and not your friends so follow your heart know your strengths do what you're passionate about and don't be afraid to pave your own path um, if anyone has any more specific questions for me or wants to talk i'd be happy to give my email uh, and have a conversation because I know that when I was trying to break into this industry, I would have done anything to talk to a professional and learn from them. So feel free to contact me. Thank you. Wow, congratulations. Thank you, Molly, so much for sharing. You're amazing. It was wonderful. I feel inspired already. Your drive and determination is definitely admirable. Um, I especially enjoyed your, your story about a day in the life, because I think a lot of us kind of think of, you know, of that TV journals as just getting on there and do the story, but to kind of hear, you know, that it's, it's a treacherous experience as well, that that, that was great to, great to kind of hear and, and imagine that. Um, so if anybody has any questions for Molly, please put it in the chat and we can have her answer them right now. Right? While her story is fresh in our mind, I'm sure there's lots of people thinking about that. Um, while we're getting those questions in there, I'll start with one of my own, Molly. When did you realize that you had to go for it, despite how competitive the television industry is and just that, like you said, kind of a lack of support from some of your uh, family and friends? Um, it was probably, so it was my freshman year of college. It was after, like I said, a semester had already passed and I was trying to figure out any other type of career that I'd be interested in. And everything that I came across just did not interest me. I had never found anything else that I wanted to work for so hard other than other than being a journalist and reporting and so yeah I was just it was my my first year of college and I was watching other people that I'd always looked up to you know on Instagram or or Facebook or whatever people that were in the industry and I finally just like threw in the towel and I was like I don't care I'm just gonna try it uh, if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out but something being hard is not a good enough reason not to try it, so. Very nice, thank you. Uh, what about when you were a child, um, what or who inspired you the most? Um, I don't know, uh, no one specifically, just watching TV, um, it was mostly sports reporters that I always just looked up to because that's what I really wanted to get into was sports reporting and just being on a, on a sideline, on a field, around all that action. I was a cheerleader for a long time. So after um, I finished cheerleading in high school, I didn't really want to give up <laughs> uh, the sidelines. I still wanted to be in the middle of all that action and just had to figure out another way to do it. So, so reporting seemed like the best way to really be in all of that energy. It's always such a good energy when I'm around sports. Everyone's always happy to be there. Everyone's always cheering. It's just a good environment. So 
just seeing all those all those sports reporters on TV is what made me really want to be like, I want to be like them and I want to do that too. <laughs> Wow. Yes. Very inspiring. Please, again, if anybody has any questions for Molly, uh, you, you've got to kind of wrap there. Here's a question, Molly, mm -hmm. um, from one of our people ever. What time do you wake up in the morning? <laughs> um, my schedule is actually really lenient right now. I wake up at like 8 a.m. I have to be at the office or be uh, in my morning meeting with my colleagues at 930. So sometimes I wake up at 745, sometimes eight. Um, and that's just my schedule. Everyone at the office has a different schedule. So our morning anchor who does the 5 a.m. show, she gets up at 2.30 in the morning. Um, and that's and then she is done with her day at 12 or at noon. And I uh, start my day at 9.30 and I'm done at 6.30. So, but it's different for everyone in the office. Well, we're glad you could uh, make some time for us tonight. Thank you. We have, I think we have time for one more question, Molly. One more from uh, Michaela out there. Was there a certain moment that inspired you to choose to ignore the negative comments and just do it? Mm, no specific moment. It was just a buildup of a lot of frustrations while I was in school. Um, I, I don't like not having a plan. So, so giving up that plan initially and, and trying to figure out what I wanted to do for school and what I wanted to study, it was just too frustrating. And I just couldn't figure out anything else I wanted to do. So it's like, if I have this one interest, that's the only thing catching my attention, I'm just going to finally go for it. So it wasn't a specific moment, just a buildup of frustrations of okay, well, I don't want to take that class. I don't want to major in that. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. I just want to do writing and speaking and reporting. So yeah, it's just a buildup of frustrations after a while. <laughs> Thanks again, Molly. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much for sharing your story, Molly. Uh, we will save any questions for her still. You can ask them at the end. Um, and now we'll have Harish uh, introduce our next speaker. Thank you, Ashley. Our next speaker graduated from El Dorado in 2015, where he was a four-year woodshop student. He was heavily involved with advanced video production, anchored the school's weekly broadcast. After graduating, he began his profession as a finished carpenter for a custom architectural woodworking firm. Christian has done impressive high-end installation projects for Hulu, Netflix, Sony Studios, Disney Animation Studios, and others. In five years, he completed the apprenticeship program and became a certified journeyman carpenter in the Carpenters Union. Currently, he is working for himself while studying to become a licensed Finnish carpentry contractor. Please help me welcome Christian Michaels. Thank you, Harish. So my story starts out a little different than most, right? Picture this, driving into downtown LA, we're going to the jewelry district, it's the night shift. 10, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. As I near the building, I get beckoned by my coworker over here. I'm gonna park down the sketchy alley. So we unload our tools. Tonight, me and this other guy are gonna install a reception desk in the main lobby of this high-end jewelry store. The desk was like no other, long and bold with very detailed angles. This desk looked like a 15-sided Rubik's cube. Just another interesting start to my workday or work night as a commercial mill worker. So here we are in this luxurious jewelry store lobby starting our install. 20 feet above me is some electricians on scissor lifts installing lights. The whole lobby is getting this beautiful stone. Desk installed for the next one. There's still gonna be stuff going on. So, while my foreman and I are measuring, cutting, assembling, and securing this architectural piece of millwork down to the floor, the stonemasons are measuring over our shoulders and cutting the stone to face our millwork because time is money, right? Once we finish up and bolt the desk down, the stone guys come flying in. They've got everything cut already, all their epoxies all mixed up, ready to go, and they're slapping all of this stone on our, on our desks that we just put in. It turns out it looks like some big, nice cut diamond. I don't even know what stone it was, but it was beautiful. So anyways, that's that. That's, a, that's an install real quick. <clears throat> College isn't for everybody, okay? It's important to know that it's not the only path to success. I kind of realized I wasn't kind of, I kind of realized I wasn't college bound in my sophomore year. 
when I was figuring there's no way I'm going to do another four to five years of homework and tests. Wasn't, I, I was getting by, but I wasn't failing, but I was getting by. I was already committed to the DMA program, the Digital Media Arts Academy, which is a four-year program in El Dorado. And I chose to continue with the Woodshop program I started in my freshman year. DMA opened up the opportunity to work on communication skills, teamwork for productions, and working on crazy deadlines for Hawk Talk. Not as crazy as Molly's, but you get the idea. Each year in Woodshop, I built on my woodworking skills and gained confidence in working with commercial equipment for finished carpentry applications. Early in my senior year, I looked at the options open in film production and woodworking. It wasn't looking too hot in film. So near the end of my senior year, I chose to enter the field of architectural woodworking. The woodshop teacher at El Dorado, Mr. Jim Fox, helped me line up a job with Sealy Brothers, the top commercial millwork installer firm on the West Coast. And I, I'm serious when I say that. This stuff is nice. Within two weeks of graduation, I met with Sealy Brothers field manager and was brought on as an apprentice. I was then indentured into the Southwest Carpenters Union and started work the following day. As a union apprentice, the pay was exceptional, included benefits, on-the-job training, quarterly training at the Carpenters Training Center in Buena Park, and <clears throat> uh, that's it. Excuse me. I learned what it meant to work for a union shop. Commercial construction is all about timelines and deadlines. Commercial projects may have, a, may have as many as one to 10 trades on a site at once, and everyone has to keep up or the schedule falls behind, and that costs money. I had to put my work, <clears throat> I had to put my work, I had to put my communication skills to work, time management, and doing what it takes to complete a job. In commercial, the level of construction is very different compared to residential. We install high quality materials on very high profile sites. It's not, <clears throat> it not only had to look great and in many cases have a wow factor, but it had to hold up to high traffic, be structurally sound, and meet strict building codes. I think the value of learning a trade and entering the job market after high school is priceless. I think there's a value beginning early on a career path that provides income and allows you to build your future. I instantly started learning. There's no textbook, there's no lesson plan, there's no quarterly test, just real life. Everything is hands-on. You take resp responsibility for your work and the work demand re demands results. Learning firsthand the ins and outs of the trade is a major key to self-reliance. Job sites change and the scope of the work is different on every project. So variety is a huge factor in this field. I learned quite quickly about decision-making, executing a plan and the importance of craftsmanship and caring about what you're doing. Networking is a huge part of construction. You're constantly meeting new people, making new connections. And if the opportunity was there, I always made it a point to shake hands and introduce myself to project managers, foremen, construction leads, and guys that I worked with that day that I had never worked with before. Whether you need help with the task on the job in that moment or looking for the next work opportunity, it's always good to make connections. That's anything in life. It doesn't matter if you're on a job site, or you're at the supermarket and this guy's wearing some clothing brand that's like, oh, that's, that's low key. Why, hey, what do you have that shirt for, bro? And then you start talking to this guy and turns out he's the owner or he works there. Point being is talk to people, make connections because that could change your life. So my takeaway at the wise old age of 25 is to realize that not everyone is set up for the same path in high school or out of high school. Don't limit yourself to what your friends are doing what everyone else in your class is doing because that's that's gonna that's gonna limit you you are your own person the opportunity for school will always be there that building is built brick and mortar it's there it's not going anywhere believe me and maybe your best fit is a trade to build a career and be successful <clears throat> what is the key that you care about something it's a horrible sentence excuse me uh, point being is if you find something in your life that you're serious about you should you should follow it so last little story here i have to share this my mom would always go back to back to school night and she'd always go to the woodshop class by the fourth year the teacher's asking Hey, you know, is anybody in here a repeating student? And my mom goes, oh, my kid's been in here for four years. 
Everyone's like looking at her like, what? No, he just enjoys the class. Trust me. Okay. So anyways, I encourage you to consider a trade. Find something you love. Let it challenge you and see what you can do with it. If if college is for you and that's something that you want to do, then I 100% I encourage that. And I think you should go out there and do that. But if you're looking at all of this stuff, like it's a foreign language to you, which literally it was to me, I was trying to take French and they wouldn't put me in French. So I took woodshop and here I am. Uh, if it looks like a foreign language to you, then you should consider what your life would be like in the trades. Thank you very much for listening. Let's, uh, let's get some questions going. Wow. Thank you so much, Christian. Very, very fun. Very exciting. I'm, I'm wowed. I, I hope to meet you uh, in the supermarket someday and, you know, you can come and work on my house because that would be great. It's definitely a skill that I don't have, but that's amazing. Right. Um, I really was inspired by your message of self-reliance. What advice do you have for our students um, here listening on what they can do to become more self-reliant even right now? Learn how to use a screwdriver and a measuring tape. Quickest thing, you're, you're gonna graduate high school, either you or your buddy's gonna get an apartment and everything is gonna break. And if you know how to screw a screw in or do the most like easiest thing, you are like God to some people just because you can, you can figure out something with the most basic information. So anyways, start using your That hands. is so true, so true. Yeah, thank you. All right, please don't hesitate to put some questions for Christian in the chat. Um, he's got a wealth of information and a very fun story that I'm sure we can uh, learn more about. Um, you mentioned your teacher um, in your woodshop class that was really an inspiration to you. Um, can yeah. you elaborate that on that? Or was there somebody else or a moment that made you realize, wow, this is really going to be a career for me? Uh, yeah, it, it definitely would have been uh, Mr. Fox because there was students before me that had gone into the same shop that I was going to. And he always talked about, yeah, for your students, you know, if you really, if you've got it, I'll, I'll put your name in. And uh, apparently I had it by the fourth year and everything lined up. I actually was supposed to work in the cabinet shop and then I made a contact with a student at El Dorado and her father was the field manager at this company. So I fast tracked, I went straight into the field and was an installer. Excellent. We've got a couple oh, more questions yeah. in for you now. Um, sure. Christian, what have you made recently that you're proud of? Um, well, I'm actually at the shop right now. And if any of you are locals to Orange County, there is a Porky's Pizza on Imperial Highway. I just built this pizza dough rolling station. So that's cool. I'm proud of that. I'm stoked on that. Uh, that's going to get installed on top of some little refrigerators at waist height, and they're going to be rolling out dough right there on Imperial and Rose. Check it out. I built it. Very nice. Thank you, Christian. Um, Jacqueline wants to know what math skills do you use on your job? Y equals MX plus B every single day. Psych. Just kidding. I use the inch on a ruler, sixteenths. So there's, there's 16 lines per inch. I read the lines in between the lines. So finished carpentry, you've got to go down to the 32nd or the 64th. And at that point, you're, you're feeling it out. You're looking, you're seeing, and you, you know what, what you need to cut off. So anyways, the math I use is tape measure. Thank you. I think we have time for one more quick question. Um, and this comes from uh, Molly and Michaela. What time do you wake up? What are your normal working hours? I, when I started in this field, it was whatever time the job started at. And that it was typically five to one. So I'd wake up at 3.30, get in my truck and drive to downtown LA or wherever. I, I'd wake up at four if it was downtown. But point being is 3.30, four, that was like standard. I've been, a, I've been called to a job at 2 a.m. So you're like going to bed at 6 p.m. It's, yeah, it sucks. But the money is there and the skills are there. There's things to learn. There's things to do. There's people to meet. There's much more in life than just Orange County. Everybody learns that when they go to college. There's plenty of things to do. But point being, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's options. 
Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and your confidence is so awesome, Christian. Thank um, you. So, <laughs> and for now, we'll introduce or we'll ask the rest of our questions for Christian at the end of tonight. Um, for now, I will pass it along to Elena Zhang and she'll introduce our third speaker. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, so our next speaker is a sophomore at Yorba Linda High School. She has been in the FIRST Robotics program for five years and is currently in her second year of the FIRST Tech Challenge in the high school league. Through her experiences with robotics, she is inspired to pursue a career in engineering through her initiation of the STEM It Up Club with the help of the REACH Foundation. She hopes to create robotic teams to compete in the FIRST LEGO League and work towards her Girl Scouts Gold Award project bringing this program to her community. Now, please help me welcome Nikita Gupta. Thank you, Elena, for that introduction. Good evening, everyone. To start off, I'll give you a little background about myself. When I was in elementary school, I tried out many different extracurriculars to really get a feel for activities in different subject areas so I could find what I really connect with. From participating in sports like swimming, pursuing dance, speech and debate, photography and Girl Scouts, I participated in a lot of activities. Then in 2017, when I was in sixth grade, I was introduced to the world of robotics and STEM. When I participated in a robotics league for elementary and middle school students called FLL, which stands for the first Lego league. In my first year, I competed with a team through an external organization. Then with the help of my parents, I created a robotics team of my own with students from my elementary school. We would tinker with our robot in my garage for hours and dedicated a huge chunk of our weekends to robotics. I had finally found something I really connected with and I stuck with it. I went on to compete in FLO for three years and then moved on to FTC or First Tech Challenge, which is the high school league. And I will be in my third year at the beginning of my junior year. I am now an aspiring electromechanical engineer, which is the equivalent to a job in robotics, but in the real world. The takeaway from this is the importance of trying many different extracurricular activities to find what you truly enjoy, and it's never too late to start. Experiences made at younger ages are highly influential. This especially applies to careers that many students shy away from, like STEM, which makes their motivation to pursue this field time sensitive. Ideally, testing out different activities and finding what you truly enjoy when you're younger forms a good foundation for what you want to pursue. However, most people find their actual interest in high school or even as adults. One example is my friend's friend who started playing golf in her junior year of high school, which is very late compared to her other peers, but she fell in love with the sport. Now she is currently part of a competitive golf program in college and is succeeding because she found what she truly wants to pursue. I am lucky to be one of the few people who knows what they want to pursue at this age, but I give credit to my parents for giving me the freedom to pursue anything that I wanted. Because at the end of the day, you are only going to want to put effort to succeed in what you truly enjoy. That can't be forced. Another thing I wanted to discuss was the quality of extracurriculars versus quantity. While many students aim to be a well-rounded model student pursuing a variety of activities to show their competency, many students take on a load too much to handle and they don't give all of their extracurriculars justice. This is where I think it's important to draw the line because this usually ends up creating unmotivated students who are just burnt out from the high expectations they must meet. I don't think the stress that students go through is properly addressed, considering the study that shows that normal children today report more anxiety than child psychiatric patients in the 1950s. Let that fact sink in. This is why I think focusing on the few activities you enjoy and doing justice to them is more important than doing so many. It's just not worth the stress. I also believe that taking on leadership roles through take action projects is a great way to give back to your community. Just last August, I made a plan to start FLO robotics teams in PYLUSD to give others the opportunity to have access to the same quality STEM education I did when I was in elementary school. Being a Girl Scout for many years, I thought it was a great way to give back to my community. So I applied for the Girl Scout Gold Award with a proposal for my project to start the robotics teams. Just in late November of 2021, my project was approved for the Gold Award, so I needed to work to find a way to make this program accessible for all students. So I, after a lot of emails left undelivered and back-to-back -back with many different organizations, I found the REACH Foundation, 
who perfectly aligned with my aspirations as I did with theirs, and they took faith in my program. On January 21st, REACH officially started working with me to bring my idea to life. We are now in the process of planning for the program and we'll have the robotics program set to start mid-March. Through this initiative, I'm able to give back my knowledge to other students and get the opportunity to introduce others to the world of STEM, which is an amazing effort I'm so happy to be a part of. So my advice is that if you have an idea, take charge. And no matter how many obstacles you get because trust me, I had many roadblocks, keep at it and work to make it come to fruition. I'm open to any questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nikita. That was an exciting story and an impressive work at creating a new club. I can I can even kind of see my uh, very own Fairmont student on here coming to me tomorrow or next week with her idea for a club, which would be amazing. So thank you for that inspiration. Can you tell me a little bit about that STEM Up Club and what the goals of the club are? Um, so currently we wanted to start off by introducing the robotics program because STEM It Up has the goal of introducing STEM to all students. I know that a lot of students don't get the opportunity to quality STEM education. And what I wanted to bring was a quality program because a lot of these programs used to be like one day workshops. And I find that those don't usually connect with the students and keep them into the program. So I thought a robotics team is a long term way to get the students really into it because a lot of studies have shown that students lose their interest in middle school in very like sensitive subjects like STEM because they think they can't pursue it. So exposing them in, in a younger age is like very influential because their motivation to pursue it is time sensitive. Great, thank you. And please don't forget to put your questions in the chat so we can get lots of more information from Nikita and all of her great experiences. Um, our next question, Nikita, is tell us about what it's like to compete at the first Lego League. So when I was in the first Lego League, um, it was just, we were just kind of thrown in there. It was very like interesting to get interested um, into the world of robotics. Uh, we had to learn um, basic engineering principles when we worked with like tinkered with motors and sensors and programming. It was very interesting. And I think from that experience, I really realized that I wanted to pursue STEM, which is why I am doing first tech challenge, which is now we're working with industrial parts. We have to cut channels. We have to screw things together. It's a lot of work, but it's, it's very interesting because we're getting real work and real like life experience as teenagers, which not many people get until they're adults. Great, thank you. We have a question um, coming to us. Uh, it's, what are some jobs that would use STEM in daily work that maybe you're thinking about? Um, definitely engineering, that's always there. Uh, STEM really applies, uh, it really depends. Um, you can definitely go into like engineering, that's great for like programming, but if you're um, for building, if you're interested in programming, you'd probably go into computer science. But um, in, in STEM, it's also networking. It's very important to be able to get your ideas out there and properly present your solutions. Like in my robotics team, we have people that are not only interested in robotics and programming, but they're also um, interested in business because it is very important to get your idea out there. You not only can create it, but it's how you present your solution and how you say it to others and definitely marketing as well. You really have to bring your idea out there. And with fundraising, we have to raise money for our team. There's a lot of jobs that apply to it. Great. I think we have time for one more quick question, Nikita. What's something that scares you? Uh, something that scares me would probably be changing career paths if I find that I'm not interested in STEM anymore, considering the amount of effort that I put into it. But Hopefully that doesn't happen and I stay interested in it. Thank you so much for sharing, Nikita. I know you're bound for big and great things. And now I'll turn it over to Angela Yao to introduce our fourth speaker. Thank you. Our next speaker graduated from UC San Diego with a BA in Cognitive Science. He was a member of the UCSD tennis team and an active member in various student organizations, such as Alternative Breaks and his fraternity Lambda Chi Alpha. 
After graduating, he worked for a few companies in their marketing department. After three years of work experience, he is now completing his master's degree in hospitality business management at Cal Poly Pomona. He is working on his master's thesis, a research project about COVID-19's effect on customer and staff interactions. Please help me welcome Domin Barua. Thank you, Angela. Hi, everyone. I'm Domin. Thank you for tuning in tonight. A little bit about myself before I got to where I am. I went to Eldorado High School. I was in the class of 2012. And during those years, my only focus was in sports. I wanted to be a professional tennis player since I was about 11 or so. So I played a lot of tournaments and then I eventually joined the high school varsity team as a freshman. During these years, I took a few AP classes and I was a part of some clubs, the French club and medical club. I wouldn't call myself an overachiever in academics. I did the minimum to be competitive for schools, but that was about it. My SAT scores were also average. I had a 1580 out of 2400. Back then, it was, it was out of 2400. Um, though tennis was my passion, I was not one of the best players in the area either. I was good in high school, but when it came to regional tournaments, I would fall short most of the time. By junior year, I grasped that most of my dream schools with high level tennis teams would be out of reach for me. As I applied, I got into some schools out of state with tennis programs. Hi, I wanted to, however, stay in state and ideally play for a tennis team here. I got into some Cal States, but most of them didn't have a tennis program. When I got notified that I got into UCSD, I couldn't believe it. My academics were average and my tennis was not good enough to get recruited by the team straight out of high school. Still today, I don't know exactly how I got in. Maybe it was the essays, uh, who knows. Uh, Though I got into other schools out of state, I wanted to go to UCSD because of their academics and as well as their solid tennis team. I tried out for the team as a walk-on and though I did not get a spot, I was able to be a part of the team as an alternate. This lasted about a year, then sadly I was replaced from an overseas recruit. Though this was tough at the time, this was, a great, this was great for me to experience new things and being in college, there were endless possibilities. I got into making music. I joined a fraternity. I also joined Alternative, Alternative Breaks, which is a volunteer organization that helps underprivileged areas out of the country. So I got to go to South America and help with an orphanage and building a playground for them and just helping them out at the, uh, at the church. Those experiences are something you keep for the rest of your life. At this time, I wasn't sure about my major either. I was a junior and I took pre-med classes at the time, but didn't have the desire to pursue it all the way. I, ev I eventually found that a major, the major that I was looking for, and this major was called cognitive science. What this, what cognitive science entailed was a mix of psychology, artificial intelligence, and decision-making. I had to take a few quarters of summer classes, classes and managed to graduate on time. I graduated by September, 2016. And since then I worked in a few different companies with an interest in psychology and communication. I naturally gravitated to business and marketing positions. I worked for a green tea company right after college then after a year, I got my insurance lic licenses, uh, brokering insurance to landscape and tree service businesses. Also for a semester, I was the junior varsity coach for Fountain Valley High School. This was where my tennis coach back in the day was teaching at, and he's still at Fountain Valley High School. It was a lot of fun and a great experience for me seeing tennis from the other side. And that year also the varsity team won its first CIF title and it was quite special to be a part of the coaching team back then. After a few years of working at different positions, I figured that going back to school would be a good option. I started graduate school in the fall of 2019. Now I'm almost done with my master's degree in hospitality business management and waiting to start the next chapter in my life. I enjoy hospitality because service is really important to me. 
I like interacting with different people and I enjoy the aesthetics of hotels, restaurants, and air travel. That's always been something I enjoy. I'm happy to share that recently I got accepted for a hotel guest services position at the Disneyland Resort, and I will be starting next week. Thank you so much for your time. Wow, thank you, Damon, for sharing that amazing story of yours. I just feel uh, grateful for hearing about your challenges and your, your willingness to kind of give us a, a down to earth story, which I think it, you can be very relatable. Um, and as people kind of give them that inspiration, if, if there's some bumps in the roads, there's, there's a reason for them. And I, I, I'm a true believer in reason for everything as well. Um, but again, just amazing. Can uh, you explain a little further how you feel like you've grown from some of these challenges and how they were put there for a purpose? Yeah. Um, you know, one thing that really, uh, one quote that I've heard a, a few times is, uh, don't sprint the marathon or life is a marathon, not a sprint. I think that applies to me a lot. In high school, I did, not only did I feel the pressures that, you know, to, you have to get into a competitive school, you have to, and that's like the only way to, to do something with your life. And then even through sports, you have to be the top in your sport to be recruited. So like all those things were, you know, up until I was in my early twenties, that really kind of stuck with me and that gave me a lot of um, pressure on myself. And it wasn't really until, you know, I just, I, after I got cut from that tennis team and I experienced some other things in college and that really kind of opened, you know, kind of opened my heart up to different things and how I was mentioning alternative breaks and uh, just kind of helping out underprivileged people. And from there changing my major and working I feel like my outlook really changed after, you know, my college experience. So, and I'm still learning. So, yeah. Um, Sorry about that. I was having some technical difficulties. Thank you. Thank you, Damon. I think everybody's yeah. really excited for your new employment opportunity at Disney. It sounds exciting. Um, as you, you move forward professionally at Disney, are you thinking of trying to continue to volunteer coach at, at a high school tennis or anything like that? Are you going to keep tennis in your life? Yeah, I mean, uh, right now I right now I work part time, but I also do uh, like I do a tennis lesson for the bosses for my boss's kids. Um, and so I kind of do that. But it would be nice to go back and be like a junior varsity coach if I can fit it into my schedule for Disney. Um, a lot of like for Disney, I'm going to have to work during the weekends and things like that. So maybe during the week, if I have a few days, I could actually go and work at, you know, as a coach. So yeah, that is something I, I would consider. Excellent. Our next question. Um, again, just how did you, how were you able to move on from your, your challenges or did you have any specific techniques that helped you along the way? Um, continuing to persevere? Um, so one was I, I had a good support system. Uh, my family and friends, uh, I was one thing was I was able to open up to them and kind of express like, especially uh, they knew how much tennis mattered to me. But at the same time, uh, some of my friends in college, it's because of them, I found found out about uh, volunteer groups like alternative breaks, and um, so I think that's one. And the other, uh, I also started meditating around that time. And I think that has helped me a lot um, in, in various aspects of my life. But um, a lot of the time, it's kind of the mind that's the most, uh, it, it could be your biggest enemy or it could be your greatest strength um, and learning how to channel it and kind of keep it at bay and just kind of being in the present, that has helped. And there's a lot of different meditative techniques that you can do, but I think they all achieve that same goal. And yeah, that's what's helped me. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing with us, Dalman. And again, congratulations on your new position at Disney. That's huge news. Um, and now, <laughs> And now we will turn it over to Evelyn Yao, who will introduce our final speaker. Thank you, Ashley. Our next 
next speaker is currently in her final semester at CSU Long Beach working towards a Bachelor of Science in Kinesiology Exercise Science. She is an honors peer mentor, along with being a founding member and the current president of the CSULB SAMEAN, South Asian, Middle Eastern, Arab, and North African Club. Passionate about healthcare, she spends her free time volunteering at St. Joseph Hospital and is well experienced as a physical therapy aide and intern at various physical therapy clinics. Her career aspirations are to become a physical therapist and eventually a director of rehabilitation. Please help me welcome Molly Gandhi. Thank you, Evelyn. Hello, everyone. First of all, I just want to say thank you to everyone that's on the Zoom right now. Thank you for spending your Wednesday night with us. I often think about what advice I would give my younger self. If I could time travel, what are some questions that younger me would ask me today? When asked to prepare this speech, the best way that I was able to answer those questions was to write a letter to my younger self. And today, I would like to share that letter with all of you. Just a little bit of a warning, it is quite cheesy, but I'm pretty cheesy, so I think this is the best way that I can give my advice. So here goes. Dear 14-year-old Molly, let me just start out by saying that everything turned out okay. I know you are nervous and anxious and excited for these next years of your life. There are going to be lots of ups and downs and everything in between, but through it all, you will be able to learn who you are as a human. You are going to find your passions and learn how to make a career out of some of them. It is hard to imagine, but enjoy the ride, no matter how bumpy it might seem right now. During high school, it will be easy to compare what you are doing to what your friends are doing. What classes are they taking? What grades are they getting? What sports are they playing? What colleges are they applying to? I want you to try your best not to compare yourself to your friends. They are going to do some amazing things, but so are you. The only person you need to worry about being better than is you from yesterday. I know right now you are probably thinking, how are you going to be able to run three miles without stopping for your cross country race coming up? You aren't gonna believe this, but you have now run a half marathon and are preparing to run a full marathon. Although you have had to get into some physical shape, the lessons you will learn from cross country, track and other sports go way beyond running and physical fitness. Just like how you had to dig deep inside yourself during a race or a game, you're going to have to do that when you have big exams to prepare for or some interviews coming up. There will be times that you work really hard to achieve something just to be told no. You might even be told no five times. But just like with running, you have to focus on that finish line and persevere. Your hard work will get you across that line. Sometimes the finish line you have imagined for yourself will not be the one that you cross. You have your heart set on the university you want to go to or the job that you want to get, and that might not happen. It is sad, and you should allow yourself to feel that sadness, but also give yourself the chance to see what other opportunities are out there. Like the very cliche quote, when one door closes, another opens. When you are given the opportunity to challenge yourself, say yes. It will be hard in the moment, but the challenges will help you grow. Always remember to be kind to yourself and to others, and you will find your way. Love, 22-year-old Molly. Thank you. Wow, thank you so much, Molly. What a, what a wonderful way of sharing with us your letter that you wrote to yourself, and uh, definitely inspirational. Um, I definitely just liked that you were offering yourself advice and really kind of just again lifting yourself up and understanding that might there might be troubles along the way but really just to giving that space and wonderful and I liked the the analogy to the, the race as well and that's a really a, a fun part so can you tell us a little bit more about your experience on the cross-country team and how that um influenced your career choice yeah when I joined cross-country my freshman year I did not think that I would stick it out for four more years because I did not like running. In middle school, I was one of the last people to finish our mild test. So everyone was very surprised when I joined cross country, um, but I stayed because I made some amazing friends that were very encouraging to me. Um, it was a positive environment and um, it just always made me 
happy after a long day of classes just to spend time with my friends doing some physical activity and I actually ended up liking to run and then moving to college I knew that it wasn't something that I wanted to do competitively but it definitely helped me when I just needed a break just to get outside get some fresh air and that's kind of still helped me today. Great. I think that kind of answered our, our question that was that came in from the chat is did sports help you with academics or your mental space? Definitely. Yeah. And um, kind of in academics, exercise science is something that involves like you have to understand a lot of anatomy and physiology. And with my background in running and getting injured in running, um, that definitely gave me some preparation with my academics. Thank you so much for sharing that letter to yourself, Molly. I'm sure it had um, something for everyone who might need it to hear what you had to say tonight. Um, and I wanna thank all of our speakers yet again for sharing um, what they had to say. And right now we'll open it up to the floor. Um, and if anyone has any questions for any of the speakers, feel free to type them in the chat, or if you even want to unmute and ask the speakers themselves, feel free to do so. I want to apologize for my speech. I got a, a text from Christian, our second speaker, after I was done calling me out because Thanksgiving always falls on a Thursday. <laughs> and I used that analogy in my speech, totally forgetting that it falls on the same day every, every year. But I know, I know it does. <laughs> Just forgot. So thanks, Christian, for calling me out for that. <laughs> gotcha. <Okay. laughs> I, uh, Molly, I think you can call out Christian because when he held up his tape measure to show us how he knows how to count out the 16 hash marks, it was upside down. Yeah, see? Take that, Christian. <laughs> So, Melina, would you like to close out our meeting? Do we have any other questions? I'm sorry, I was just taunting my son in case you all didn't realize this my last name was the same. I couldn't help myself. <laughs> no, I'm glad you did. <laughs> Well, if, yeah. if, are there any other questions coming up for any of our guest speakers? Okay. I would like to ask, uh, Ashley, could you put up your um, slides? At the end, you have a slide talking a little bit about um, some of the foundation items. Um, this, is our, this is our fifth from the inside. Uh, speaker series, and I've sat in on every single one of them. Um, everyone, I come away inspired. I've learned something new. Um, come on, my, so a few of my takeaways here tonight, pave your own path. Don't limit yourself. Um, leadership roles are important to your success. Um, life is a marathon, not a sprint. And be better than you were yesterday amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm always um, so inspired at the end of these, these uh, speaker series that we do. And I, I thank everybody for being part of it today. I really also want to say a big thank you to our academics team, uh, led by Giselle with Anne and Ashley helping um, manage and produce this wonderful event. Uh, we are really fortunate to be able to be continuing this program. Um, we started in COVID and I think we're at the end of it. So I hate to say, but I think we're so close. Uh, but anyway, it's been so, so great to be together. Um, one thing we'd like to ask is if tonight you are inspired and you might think, hmm, I know somebody who could share their story. Um, let us know our next um, From the Inside Series 6.0 is going to be held on May 18th. So we are looking for guest speakers. Uh, we'd love to get some suggestions. You may have a family friend or you may have someone that you knew uh, graduated and is in college or in a career, share their, their names with us. We'd love to get in touch with them and keep the program going. Um, two other things that I wanna ask of our 
uh, audience and our speakers tonight. Um, help spread the word. We've got a great program coming up with our Shamrock and Run. Uh, let's all get back out at Yorba Regional Park on March 20th. Run a 2K, a 5K, walk it, jog it, bring your pets, bring your kids in a stroller, whatever it takes. Let's just all get together. It's going to be fabulous. Um, there's more information on our website, reachforpylusd.org. Maybe someone can put that in the chat box for me. Um, but we would love to see a big turnout at our Shamrock and Run. We're so excited to be back in person. And then we have one more really cool thing that's coming up and it's called Vintage Promware. And here again, it's just, you know, spread the word, share the love. Uh, Reach Foundation collects gently used promware, formal wear for guys and gals from the community. Uh, and then we, hold pop-up shops at every high school where the students can come pick out an outfit for free. Beautiful dresses, great looking suits. Um, we would love to just have so many things we could give to our students um, for their proms. And again, district says proms are on. So we're just really thrilled. This is gonna be a great spring. Um, so again, I'm gonna throw back to Ashley. My big thanks to the academic team, another, um, Wonderful event. Thank you so much again, everyone, for coming. Um, I will stick around, or um, if anyone has any other questions, um, Giselle, do you have anything to add for tonight? I just want to thank all of our speakers for their time, their preparation, and the heart that they shared with us tonight through their stories. Thank you so much for the gift that you gave to, to all of us. And Anne, Ashley, outstanding job. Thank you, thank you so much. This has uh, been one of our best from the inside event. And I think every single time it gets better and better. So I'm looking forward to, this, to the sixth event, which is going to be in May. Thank you all for being here. Thank you so much. You guys are amazing. Thank you. All right. Have a wonderful yeah. evening. No, thank you, Melina. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Damon. Yeah, Great absolutely. job, Molly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If you have questions and want to just hang on, you can uh, ask any of our speakers or any of us from Reach. We're we're here. Yay! I like reading the. The tech spectacular. Thank you. You're amazing. Look at all these great comments. Great job, speakers. You all did a really, really good job presenting. Uh, just, just so good, so professional. And uh, you guys are all so smart. I just love it. <laughs>